Harrison Ford is back on the big screen as the fearless archaeologist Indiana Jones. Accompanied by a new partner, played by the talented British Phoebe Waller-Bridge, Indy once again puts on his hat and wields the whip that have accompanied him since the beginning of his adventures in 1981, in the movie The Raiders of the Lost Ark. This time, the artifact he seeks to recover from the hands of the Nazis is the one mentioned in the title of the film, Dial of Destiny, also referred to as the Archimedes Machine. This artifact is based on a real object, an ancient Greek device discovered by archaeologists in 1900, called the Antikythera Mechanism. But what exactly was the Antikythera Mechanism anyway? What was it designed for? And what is its relation to the famous Greek mathematician mentioned in the movie? Had it not been for a storm that hit the rocky Greek island of Antikythera just over a century ago, one of the most intriguing and complex objects of the ancient world might never have been found. After taking shelter on the island, sea sponge hunters decided to explore the waters to see if they had any luck. They found the wreckage of a Roman vessel that sank during another storm 2,000 years ago, when the Roman Empire was beginning to conquer Greek colonies in the Mediterranean Sea. On the seabed lay the largest cargo of Greek treasure ever discovered. And among beautiful copper and marble statues lay the most intriguing object in the history of technology. Made of corroded bronze and the size of a modern laptop, it was manufactured 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece. This device is known as the Antikythera Mechanism and has become a kind of machine of the future. If it hadn't been discovered in 1900, nobody would have imagined, or even believed, that something like this existed. It's so sophisticated, said mathematician Tony Freeth. Imagine, someone, somewhere in ancient Greece, built a mechanical computer, said Greek physicist Yanis Bitsakis, who is part of the international team researching this incredible artifact, as is Freeth. It's a mechanism of really incredible genius, Freeth added. And they're not exaggerating. It took about 1,500 years before something similar to the Antikythera mechanism was developed, in the form of the first astronomical mechanical clocks in Europe. However, understanding what this mysterious object was took time, knowledge, and a lot of effort. One of the challenges was its anachronism. The first expert to examine the 82 recovered fragments in detail was the English physicist and pioneer of scientometrics, Derek J. de Sala Price. He began to work in the 1950s and in 1971, together with Greek nuclear physicist Karolampos Karakalos, used X-rays and gamma rays to obtain images of the pieces. From this, it was discovered that there were 27 gear wheels or cogs inside the device, revealing its tremendous complexity. The experts were able to date some of the other pieces found with considerable precision, placing them between 70 BC and 50 BC. Price conjectured that counting the teeth of each gear could provide clues to the machine's operation. With the aid of two-dimensional images, the wheels overlapped, which made the task difficult. However, he was able to identify two numbers, 127 and 235. These two numbers were extremely significant in ancient Greece, said astronomer Mike Edmonds. Could it be that they were being used to track the movement of the moon? The idea was so revolutionary and advanced that Price even questioned the object's authenticity. If ancient scientists in Greece were able to create gear systems like this two millennia ago, the entire history of Western technology would have to be rewritten, Freeth said. Greece two millennia ago was one of the most creative cultures that ever existed, and their greatness in development in all fields, including astronomy, then considered a branch of mathematics, was not questioned. They understood the movements of celestial bodies in space, were able to calculate the distances between them and knew the geometry of the orbits of these celestial bodies. However, would they be able to use complex concepts of astronomy and mathematics to program a device to track the movement of the moon? The number 235 found by Price was the key to the mechanism for calculating lunar cycles. The Greeks knew that there was an average of 29.5 days between one new moon and the next. But this created a problem for the calendar of 12 months in the year, because 12 times 29.5 results in 354 days, that is, 11 days less than necessary, explained Alexander Jones, historian of ancient astronomy. The seasons and the calendar would be out of sync. 
However, the Greeks were also aware that 19 solar years almost correspond to 235 lunar months, a cycle known as metonic. This means that if you have a 19-year cycle, in the long run, your calendar is perfectly synchronized with the seasons, Jones noted. And to connect all these dots, the experts found on one of the fragments of the Antikythera mechanism inscriptions in Greek that made reference to the metonic cycle. Thanks to counting the teeth of the gears, the mechanism began to reveal its secrets. The phases of the moon were of immense use at that time. They helped in determining when to sow, in choosing strategies in battles, in setting dates for religious festivities, in planning debt payments or night journeys. The other number, 127, helped Price understand another function related to our natural satellite, the device also indicated the moon's orbits around the Earth. After 20 years of intensive research, Price concluded that he had solved the puzzle. However, there were still pieces of the puzzle to be fitted together. The next step in the research required customized technology and an international team of experts. The team managed to convince Roger Hadland, an engineer specializing in X-rays, to develop and bring to the National Archaeological Museum in Athens, Greece, a special machine to create three-dimensional images of the mechanism. Through another device that highlighted the inscriptions covering most of the fragments, the researchers found a reference to the gears and another key number, 223. Three centuries before Athens' Golden Age, ancient Babylonian astronomers discovered that after 223 moons from an eclipse, equivalent to 18 years and 11 days, known as the Sarah Cycle, the moon and Earth returned to the same position, indicating the possibility of another similar event on that date. When a lunar eclipse occurred, the Babylonian king would abdicate and a replacement would take his place, so bad omens would befall him. Then they would kill him and the king would resume power, reported John Steele, a Babylonian expert at the British Museum in London. And the number 223 also corresponded to one of the wheels of the Greek mechanism. In a way, the Antikythera mechanism had the ability to predict the future by predicting eclipses. The device not only determined the day, but also the time, the direction in which the shadow would cross, and even the color of the moon that would be visible. As if that wasn't amazing enough, the scientists made another wonderful discovery. The cycle of eclipses depended on the pattern of lunar movement, and, as Tony Freeth explained, nothing related to the moon is simple. Not only is the lunar orbit elliptical, meaning it moves faster when it's closer to Earth, he explained. Could Antikythera's mechanism follow this oscillating motion of the moon? Certainly. Two smaller gears, one with a clamp to regulate the speed of rotation, accurately reproduce the time needed for the moon to complete its orbit, while another, with 26.5 teeth, compensated for the variation in displacement. And, as if that wasn't enough, by examining the fragments that remained of the front of the device, the team of experts concluded that it could have been used to calculate the movements of some planets. It was an extraordinary idea to take the scientific theories of the time and mechanize them to predict what would happen in later days, months, and even decades, the mathematician emphasizes. It was essentially the first time humanity had created a computer, Freeth pointed out. It is truly amazing that a scientist of that time figured out how to use bronze gears to track the complex movements of the moon and planets. But who was the inventor of this device? Once again, experts investigated the remaining fragments of this fabulous artifact in search of an answer. A clue lay in one of its functions. The Antikythera mechanism also predicted the exact date of the Panhellenic Games, the Olympic Games, the Pythian Games, the Isthmian Games and the Nemean Games. Interestingly, although the Olympic Games were the most prestigious, the Isthmian Games in Corinth were represented with much larger letters in the inscriptions of the artifact. In addition, researchers had already noted that the names of the months present on another gear were related to Corinth. The evidence indicated that the maker of this piece was Corinthian and probably resided in the richest colony ruled by Corinth, Syracuse. And Syracuse was home to the most brilliant of Greek mathematicians and engineers, Archimedes. It was perhaps the work of the most important scientist of classical antiquity, the man who determined the distance to the moon, discovered how to calculate the volume of a sphere, described the fundamental number pi and claimed that with a lever he could move the world. Only a mathematician as brilliant as Archimedes could have designed the Antikythera mechanism, opined Tony Freeth. The truth is that Archimedes was in Syracuse when the Romans arrived to conquer it. 
He was killed by a Roman soldier, although the general Marcus Claudius Marcellus ordered him not to be killed. Syracuse was eventually sacked and its treasures were sent to Rome. General Marcellus took with him only two pieces, both by Archimedes. The research team believes that these pieces were older versions of the mechanism. A clue lies in the description by the noted orator Cicero of one of the Archimedean machines he saw in the house of General Marcellus' grandson. Archimedes found a way to accurately represent in a single device the varied and distinct movements of the five planets, with their different speeds, so that the same eclipse would occur both in the apparatus and in reality, Cicero said. But what happened to the brilliant Greek technology that gave birth to the first computer? Why was it not developed further? Why did it end up lost? Like many things, with the fall of the Greeks and later the Romans, knowledge migrated to the east, where it was preserved for a time by the Byzantines and later passed on to Arab scholars. The second oldest known bronze contraption dates from the 5th century and bears inscriptions in Arabic. In the 13th century, the Moors reintroduced this knowledge to Europe. Earlier investigations established that the mechanism was housed in a wooden box, which has not stood the test of time. A box that brought together all the knowledge of the world, time, space, and the universe. It is somewhat intimidating to realize that just before the fall of a great civilization, the ancient Greeks came so close to our era, not only in terms of thinking, but also in scientific technology," concluded Derek J. de Sala Price.